Welcome to the Hidden History series. In this episode, we will discuss the history of electroculture. Electroculture is a method of applying atmospheric electricity to increase plant growth. It will increase yields from harvestable fruits and vegetables using the telluric energy from the atmosphere of planet Earth to increase the size and vitality of organic foods. By using basic materials like copper wire magnets to vitalize the soil and increase yields by 100% to 300%. It also eliminates the need for fertilizer and pesticides. It is not electricity as we know it, but a breath of energy which stimulates and increases the vitality of the soil. The British government spent 20 years between the First and Second World Wars investigating the possibilities of electrifying plants with very few people knowing about it. The earliest record of electroculture and where its understanding began was in 1532 by the Swiss physician, alchemist, theologian and philosopher called Philippus Oralis Theophratopus Bombastus von Hohenum who many knew as Paracelsus. He was part of the German Renaissance in Northern Europe and initiated a basic understanding of electroculture because of his studies from 1526 to 1532. Paracelsus considered how substances which are poisonous in larger doses might be curative in smaller doses. He showed how this was possible with examples of magnetism and static electricity on flowering and non-flowering plants. Paracelsus realized magnetism is an impulse which is generated in substances by the motion of electrons with its atoms. He became a pioneer of the medical revolution during the German Renaissance as he emphasized the value of observation in combination with a received accumulation of statistical information. Electroculture is a very well-known tool for increasing plant yields, but the policy makers have suppressed this science with societies because it avoided pesticides and chemicals to treat crops. Also, by increasing the abundance of food harvest, communities could live away from authoritarian control. In 1749, the French clergyman called Juan Antoine Nollet, also known as Abbe Nollet, a French clergyman and physicist, did a number of experiments with electricity and discovered osmosis. Osmosis explains how kidneys clean our blood, how plants control photosynthesis and, in part, how cells control their internal environment. He was the first to report a phenomenon that is very well known today as electrostatic spraying. He noted that water flowing from a vessel would aerolize if the vessel was electrified and placed near electrical ground. In the late 1770s, Bernard Germain Etienne de la Ville Solane began some experiments watering, which, as he put, it had been impregnated with electrical fluid. He published a 700-page long essay on electricity in 1781, which reported his findings that the germination of seeds and the sprouting of bulbs was faster when plants were electrified and grew to larger sizes. In 1785, the venerated French physician called Pierre-Nicolas Berthelon, who some knew by the name of Abbey Berthelon, produced his magnetic harpsichord, which was an early acoustic carillon-type instrument operated by magnetic attraction. He replicated Benjamin Franklin's flying a kite experiment to attract lightning to investigate the benefits of electricity and health. He also tried watering plants with electrified water, 
delivered from an insulated barrel on a trolley that could be trundled along by the gardener between the rows. In 1783, he published Electricity from Plants, which included a description of the first electroculture tool, the electro vegetate Berthelon set up miniature lightning conductors to collect electricity from the atmosphere and then distributed the charge via wires across the garden. Moving forward to the 1840s, there was a whole new set of experiments done and Alex Bain invented what was called the Earth Battery in 1841. Bain's device operated on the same principles as a modern day battery except the zinc and copper plates were placed into the soil and connected above ground by wires. Plants grown in the area between the two plates grew faster, yielding more plants and vegetables. In 1844, Robert Forster, a Scottish landowner of Findrassi near Elgin, used what he termed atmospheric electricity to substantially boost his barley crop. Details were reported in the British Cultivator in March 1845. Forster was no pioneer here, as there were plenty of amateur scientists who had never stopped trying to perfect a way of getting electricity to boost plant growth. He only developed an idea that was very well used among communities at the time. But of course, it was Forster that took the credit as the developer. In the 1880s, Professor Carl Selim Lermström of Helensky University, a geophysicist studying the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights, began to wonder if they had an effect on plant growth because he noticed that the trees in the far north grew rapidly despite the short growing season. This led him to start experimenting with the effects of atmospheric electricity on germination and plant growth. Lemstrom's results attracted international attention and he was able to conduct some of his later experiments in collaboration with other scientists in Sweden, Germany and at Durham College of Science. During April 1905 to February 1908, the famous Russian-French philosopher and Russian-French inventor called George Lukoski discovered that spirals of wire could be used to improve the health of trees, plants and humans. Apparently, the Lukoski coil was an inductor capacitor circuit that also became known as a resonant or tuned circuit which could enhance the growth rate of trees and plants. Such a metallic instrument was the result of Pierre Nicolas Berthelon's having inquired into the essence of magnetism and electricity by the usage of acoustic patterns. From 1922 to 1927 by the French polymath called Justin Christoflo who was a senior member of the Society of Scientists and Inventors of France, and from 1943 to 1948 by the incredible Austrian naturalist and water wizard called Victor Scharberger. Even though so much research was made between World War I and II investigating the use of electroculture to help with the food shortages and rations during the wars, it was still not developed. After the 1950s, this knowledge was again suppressed as it didn't fit the technological coming age the policy makers wanted to create as it would increase the growth of vegetables, plants, naturally helping and improving the well-being of human beings, not involving pesticides and chemicals, also not profiting the corporations. This would have given humans an abundance of natural foods to improve people's health and well-being. In recent years, there has been an increased interest in electroculture, but still it is not taken seriously within the mainstream. 
In 2019, in Beijing, China, a commercial greenhouse was built as part of a government-backed project to boost the yield of crops by bathing them in the invisible electric fields that radiate from power cables. But also in Europe, research has shown encouraging results and electroculture advocates. And some scientists are at last saying that harnessing electricity this way could revolutionize food production. It is hard to completely verify, but still very well documented. Nikola Tesla converted the engine of a Pierce Arrow car with his nephew in 1931 in Buffalo, New York in the United States. They apparently removed the gasoline engine and replaced it with a brushless AC electric motor. The motor was powered by a cosmic energy power receiver, harnessing the energy from the atmosphere and creating an atmospheric based car running on free energy. Although this is not electroculture, it would certainly prove that it's possible to harness this atmospheric energy in many ways. There is no doubt electroculture works. Atmospheric energy exists all around us. You only have to put an antennae or some sort of conductor into the ground next to the plants or vegetables and planet Earth will do the rest. Electroculture antennae can be built with wooden dowels or copper pipes and using conductive wire spiraled up from the base. Then by placing next to your fruits, vegetables and plant life, this will increase the growth by doubling and sometimes up to three times the amount of a normal yield. All the information and research is out there with this simple, effective and suppressed science to create an abundance of natural foods and it is for us to rediscover so we reintegrate it into society. Thank you for watching this episode of Hidden History Series. Please subscribe for more or consider becoming a member to the channel. Thank you and I will see you soon.